Hello, I'm a sad robot. Oh. It's day four and we made some progress. I've made some robot eyes and I've done a little bit towards animating. Let's see what I've done. Okay, so I've got uh, two things here. I've made some bones. I followed a little bit of a tutorial on how to animate the eyes. And I think that I've got this here. So I think I can choose this. Yes, yeah. So I've got both of these eyes. Now, they're not quite lined up at the moment because I did some sort of... I think I was rotating them, honestly. <laughs> I think I was doing this. Yeah. <laughs> There's the eye. <laughs> yeah, I think I was rotating them and I uh, might have sent it on a magical adventure. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Uh, this iris here is, uh, I think, rotating around one of the bones on the far side there and I wasn't quite certain how to fix that on uh, with controls that I see in front of me. So <laughs> anyway so let, let's get this uh, oops it sure does not take very much though yeah but uh, this part where I can move the eyes around this I think is working right this one there yeah so and that that's pretty good right uh what i was hoping though is that this is a, a robo character and uh yeah let's see here i i did some kind of vector painting for an iris and i thought this was pretty good and i was hoping i could just rotate the whole iris here and i'm not quite sure like, I can do it, but I've got them together, and I wanted them just to kind of rotate right in place, not, like, go on a magical adventure. Um, so, first thing is, I wasn't sure how to set this this uh, armature, the bone thing here, to the center of uh, this iris, and that's something I want to be able to do. So, that's one thing that I'm unclear on. I don't know how to center one thing on top of another thing. I need to learn that. If somebody could show me how to do that, that'd be perfect. Okay. And the other thing is that I would like to... Um, I've got the, ir the iris? No. What are these things? Eyelid. Yes. And, yeah, I can move these around. And I need to be able to lock them. I don't want to be able to move them in the X coordinate space here. Yeah, I don't want them to uh, move in the x-coordinate space. And I think that there's some sort of way that I can... Can I do it here? Lock? Does that do it? Wait. No, that didn't do it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so there's some sort of mechanic. Uh, I I'm assuming that there's a mechanic in here somewhere. Yeah. Anyways, let me show you what I did to get the irises and these things onto uh, the armature. So in, um, so I drew two eyes. Okay. I don't think you guys saw that on camera. I was so struggling with that yesterday that it was <laughs> a little bit of a magical adventure. Anyways, I did eventually get it. And uh, yeah, so there is a, let's go down to uh, object mode, go to left eye. Okay. So here we are. Uh, now in the background, you can see there's my eyelid. Okay. And it is masked by my eyeball and the rim of the eyeball, which is like the, the black layer on the outside layer. That's the wrong word. Outline. <laughs> Yeah, it's masked by the outline. Anyway, so I'm able to uh, just basically move it up and down. And so all this stuff out here, it's masked out. Uh, same with the iris. It's masked just by the eyeball. But if we go down here, uh, back to pose mode, you'll notice that uh, the outline... Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see. Let's go look in close. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, if you see here, the outline, this outer rim on the eyeball shape, it's still there. 
And so it actually just overlaps, uh, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want, uh, I didn't want to have the iris like go over top of that border. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the animation and how I did that was if we go to objects and which one was it? Left eye iris. Yeah, there's a thing called relations here, and I'm not entirely certain how this is supposed to function, uh, but I did get it. So what I did is I chose uh, the eye rig, which is like the, I guess, the skeleton or some sort of skeletal type of thing. Uh, anyways, and then basically uh, I just attach it to the bone that I've got listed there in the, in this bone right there is the left iris bone. And this one there is the right iris bone, and they are together in a bone group. And I am moving the group around, and that's how I was able to get them to, to work like that. I still need to figure out how to do rotation, so that will come. And uh, hopefully somebody will actually look at this and be like, aha, this is what you need to do. Anyway, so that was some progress. Okay. So next thing, uh, I suppose I could animate the eyebrows here. I wasn't entirely certain what to do for eyebrows. I've never had to draw an eyebrow before. Uh, let's do that right now, actually. Okay, so... Hmm. Okay, so for today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw in the face a little bit more detailed and I'm gonna just do that by hiding some stuff here. For starters, uh, we've got this lovely brain. You can hide the brain. <laughs> oh man, I've got an outline there. Oh dear. Which one are you? Uh, I think this needs to go to a different layer, right? Move to layer. Uh, which one was that? Brain fill? Yeah, there it is. Okay, good. Ha! Excellent. Okay, so uh, yeah, what we're going to do here is we're just going to uh, just get the rest of this face kind of drawn in. Uh, there's something I want to do with his head here, and I'm not entirely certain how I want to approach it. Uh, one thing I was thinking of doing is, uh, let me see here, if I go back to my brain fill, you see how I've got... Uh, everything here is a kind of on a, well, it's painted on a three-dimensional mesh. Uh, and, well, these are all just grease pencil fill objects, which is fine. But I was kind of thinking I should maybe just um, do an entire surface, like go all the way to the back. And uh, maybe what I could do then is uh, I could, like, animate the entire like robo head like it could like do some sort of spinning brain type of animation which i think would be kind of cool i might do something like that we'd involve drawing this again but you know whatever this is relatively easy to do now that i know the process of how i want to do it right okay so let's uh let's hide this brain fill thing and uh what do i have fills here that's the only one hey okay what do we have for lines Everything is on the lines. Okay. Maybe I'll make a new layer. We'll call this face details. All right. And let us go up here. We'll choose a pen. Uh huh. Solid stroke. Let's go down to our materials. Um. Yeah, this is probably fine. I think we can probably just choose a color. Uh, in this case, we'll just go black. Okay, now I should mention that I have never done any character design, whatever, whatsoever, in my entire life. Uh, so this is, like, truly just like an experiment. And, yeah. Okay, so what do I want to do here? Uh, first thing is, we've got this kind of like forehead shape here. You can see that this one here, and this is something I kind of painted on our uh, surface. And I think I moved the surface, so that's not all that much good anymore. So let's just go back and let's just recreate this without the 3D uh, effect, I guess. Yeah. One moment. I'm going to pause the recording. I'm going to go look up some examples of robo brains from various media. I want to see if we can get some inspiration for how we want to do this. Okay. So don't go anywhere. 
I have to go do some some research. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I'm gonna put a, uh, a an image up. This is by an artist. Um, uh, his name is Phil Sawstack, and this is kind of the look I kind of want to go for, uh, a little bit. So it's a li his his interpretation of how he wants to do his little android creature. Uh, he's like quite a big glass skull. And uh, we're going to do a little bit less than that. But one of the things I notice is that he has uh, quite a thick, like, uh, rim around where the glass and the the uh, skull interface. So we're, we can do that here. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Uh, was it shifty, right? Uh huh. And I want to move this up and down. What is uh is it the z yeah i think it is yeah z okay and then i want to scale it i guess let's just move it first all right i think i uh yeah so i want to shift d duplicate it wait what did i do this thing shift d right and then i want it to move up and down in the z like so and then, uh, okay, right here, select it again. Come on, select. Why can't I select you? Okay, I did it that way. Okay, and then I can go S for scale, and I just want this to be a little bit larger, right? Okay, and then there is, I believe if I go to the draw mode, uh, oops, wrong one. There is a uh, snipper tool, right? But I think I can just go snip. Right? Can I not snip that? Wait, you. You're the one I want to snip. Whatever. We'll get that later. <laughs> Can I snip you? A little bit. Okay. So, now, what we're going to do here is we're going to... So, this is going to be his... Uh, yeah, the top of his skull, right? And so, this is going to be... We're going to put a glass layer right on top of this. Okay. So, how do you think to... Hmm. I'm not entirely sure. I think maybe one thing to do is we... How do you think you draw glass as like a cartoony type thing? I have no idea. Let's find out. <laughs> okay, so uh, like, I, like I mentioned, I've got this kind of... We can do this kind of effect, right? But let's, let's try something here. Um... So let, let's do this. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be the top of his glass skull. Okay. Cool. All right. Now, um, one thing that I like about what I've done here is that it doesn't follow the regular pattern that is uh, like a human skull, a person's skull would actually follow. Right. Okay. Now, next one here is... Um, I want some extra line art going across. We'll do from right here. Oops. <laughs> you fool. Okay, so we're going to draw the... Oh, these are obviously not even. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to draw this one down here. Actually, let's start this one from scratch. We'll go from there to there. Okay, I want a fill, all right? And, oh, you know what I really want? Uh, I don't know how to do this. I'd like kind of a gradient type of fill. And I tried quite a bit with the gradients, and the mechanics for how you can control them are not clear. Okay, so what we're going to do... Now, again, we're going to go to the fills thing here, and I want to make a fill. Okay, first thing, I just want to try, is this, if I just put this blue in here? Nope. Wrong one here. We need to go to solid fill. Okay, that blue is, wait. Right, is that working? Yes, this is working. 20% mix factor. Okay, that's not the right color. So we want a, a white maybe even a gray something like this
Wait, that's just copying the material. Did I not literally just a few sec? Mm. Orange. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Seriously. Green. Okay. Blue. That's way too dark. Am I doing this wrong? Does it need to be like that? Thick glass. Okay. Let's just pour that there and there. And then I turn on my layers again. Right. And turn off the details. Oh, I'm going to have to hide these lines. Hmm. That's kind of the effect I'm looking for. Anyways, uh, I'll continue practicing it. Uh, I think that I need to do some feathering, and I'm not entirely certain how to feather uh, a texture. So I'm going to uh, fiddle with this, for lack of a better word. Do a little bit of fiddling. And uh, we'll get back to it. All right, see you guys next time.